everybody, and welcome to the final event of Daytona Speed Week. We have arrived at the finale of Speed Week. I am Levi McIntyre, the voice of the NNS CRA Marvel Studios Cup Series, here to welcome you to the Great American Race, the Daytona 500, as we are getting set for quite the interesting event for you guys. As a recap of the starting lineup right here, little reminder and i apologize for any confusion that may have happened as far as who made the races in the gatorade duels it all got sorted out and we got the official list so starting in the last row is going to be oscar anderson the rookie out of red bull racing with joshua collard next to him top 10 in the lineup however cole deaver who got the pole and won gatorade duel number one Starts on the pole, and starting next to him is the guy who qualified second, James Qualls. Row two is Charles Sanford and Gatorade Duel number two winner, Grayson Ace Veto. Row three is Nelson Thornhill, Dylan Poteet. Row four, Chris Michaels, Jessica Shelton. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, <coughs> and then row five, Zach Rogers and Matt McIntyre. So with that said, let's go ahead and get the command to fire engines for the Daytona 500. Uh, uh, drivers, start, start your engines! Is that okay? okay? No, it's not okay, you dumb buffoon. Ha 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 ha. But in any ways, <clears throat> we're about to get this race started. Cars going out on track for their one and only... Uh, Pace lap. Cole Deaver, who is on the pole, he's had an interesting speed week. Like I said, he qualified on the pole and then followed that up with a win in the Gatorade Duel number one race. So he's looking to go three in a row and win the 500. James Qualls, who had an interesting Daytona Speed Week back in duel number two, gets in a crash, but somehow stays on track to keep from having to do any repairs to the car in order to keep the second position in the starting lineup. So he's going to have quite the interesting race ahead of him. <clears throat> and then one of the other guys to keep an eye out for, Dylan Young, who starts in the back, won the Budweiser shootout, didn't do too well in qualifying or the duels, so he's looking to try to redeem himself and perhaps win the 500 after winning the Bud Shootout. And then another guy who's had a successful speed week is Grayson Ace Veto, the Gatorade Duel number two winner. So those are some guys to keep your eye out for in terms of who can go multiple or three in a row in some cases here in Daytona Speed Week. Cole Deaver winning, uh, getting the pole, and winning duel number one, Grayson Ace Veto winning duel number two, and Dylan Young winning the Budweiser shootout. So we shall see what happens there, and of course James Call starting second. But we are about to get this baby underway. Pace car in the pit road, and I can only mean one thing, it's time to boogity 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 go racing. Charles Sanford <coughs> leads lap number one, but here comes Retro Racing Enterprise teammate James Qualls, who started second. He's now going to try to go for the lead here in the early goings. Meanwhile, we got uh, three wide, several rows deep, behind about uh, sixth place. <coughs> 
a couple of Dodge Darts trying to work their way into the picture. Zach Rogers stuck in the middle, but Charles Jackson in the double zero Aaron's Hellman's machine for uh, Michael Waltrip Racing is trying to work his way into the picture as well. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but anyways, James Qualls led that lap, but now it's three wide for the lead. Chris Dollarton in the number 23 Xbox Ford for Young Motorsports is going to get the advantage of using the inside line. And Seth Cole, another retro racing enterprise car running in the 98 this season, he's trying to go for the lead with drafting help from Jonathan Zorlin in the 5. And Zorlane comes down in front of uh, Dougie Shears in the 83, one of the three Red Bull racing cars in the field. And whoa, contact! Contact between teammates, Keb Shearer and JT Bryant, nearly took each other out, but somehow we avoided a wreck and they're back in line on the racetrack, still in the pack. <clears throat> Meanwhile, it looks like a little tandem going on between the 5 of Zorline and the 98 of Seth Cole. And now Zorline's about to go separate it and try to go for the lead himself. <clears throat> so far, every lap we've had a different leader. <clears throat> Zorline trying to continue that streak. And now with a full head of steam comes Trent Dunham. With David Rivera separating himself from... Uh, Sega Motorsports teammates Benjamin Miles and Tim Fiegel as Jonathan Zorlin leads that lap. And Jonathan Zorlin is no stranger to Victory Lane here at Daytona. If I recall, back when I did the NNSCRA Walking Dead series, I believe he won at Daytona. So we shall see if he can get another Daytona win. But for now, he's got David Rivera coming to the inside with a run. <coughs> Thanks to drafting help from Kyle Matthews. And now Rivera's got the run. Kyle Matthews in the 09, former uh, Walmart Cup Series Daytona 500 winner. Trying to go for another one for himself. And Rivera, just barely at the line, led that lap. And now Kyle Matthews is going to get a run. But in turn, here comes the 62 of Dorian Face Puncher. And how about Joshua Collard? Five laps into the race, and he started dead last, and now he's up in the top five. <clears throat> I guess friends are where you find them. And Collard has worked his way up from dead last up to the top five within a matter of five laps. Oh my goodness, this cannot end well. Four wide for the lead. Oh my goodness, two teammates running right there. Be careful. Oh, I have no, whoa. Oh my goodness. Oh, near contact and we still keep it safe, but it's still four wide. Face puncher stuck up on the high line and he got the wall a little bit and that slowed the high line's momentum down. And that caused a bit of a separation within the pack. I have no... Oh my goodness! And as I was about to say, we didn't have a wreck, we got a crash! Multi-cars crash. I believe, yeah, Carson Gum was involved. Emmanuel Hartnett, Jessica Shelton was in it. Oscar Anderson, I think, got a piece. And the pole sitter, Cole Deaver, might have been, might have been involved. Multi-car crash in turns one and two brings the caution out and now we have a new leader Dylan Thoreau in the 41 <clears throat> Dylan Thoreau leads us to the caution here at Daytona after a what looked like a five car incident here in turns one and two but man that was some great racing we saw in the beginning they kept it four wide for her several feet and did not crash but then shortly afterwards we did get a wreck so I'll be curious to see what happened and with that and as I better look around back here to make sure they're not running into each other and they're not so everything looks to be okay when it comes to bunching up and getting in line so 
Dylan Thoreau leads the Daytona 500. Let's go ahead and take you to a replay of what brought the caution out for the first time today here in the Daytona 500. So this wreck gets all started up by a rookie mistake by the 82 of Oscar Anderson. Pulls out a line in the middle line underneath of Zach Rogers and is trying to make it four wide and it just wasn't really the right thing to do and it is four wide right there and then he comes down as the what looks like the 91 of Zachary Fitzwater was coming up and as a result that sends the 82 back up the racetrack into Emmanuel Hardneck, Cole Deaver, Carson Gum, and Jessica Sheldon but luckily all those cars were up in the high line so it didn't take out many other cars but that's a tough break for quite a few people who had high hopes coming into the race. As there you see it, it's clearly four wide right there. Just not enough room to really make that work in the corner. And then, as a result, the 82 comes down, the 91 comes up, and they make contact. And then the 82 comes right back up in the hard net. And Cole Deaver nearly had it missed, but got tagged by the 20 as he hit the 82 and the 19 and the 02 just had nowhere to go in that whole mess so we might have a couple of people retire out of the race as a result a couple cars that might be slow and off the pace as a result of this incident and look at this battle that happened for the lead during that time period but anyways let's take you to the restart here in the daytona 500 well, as a result of that uh, multi-car accident, we have two cars officially out of the race, and they include Jessica Sheldon and Emmanuel Hartnett. Both cars sustained big-time damage in that mess to the point where now they are officially done for in this Daytona 500. Tough break for those two. But anyways, uh, we have 40 cars left in the field, so let's look and see who is all lined up right now. Dylan Thoreau is your leader, second is Johnny Gardner, third is Dougie Shears, fourth Chris Dollarton, fifth Benjamin Miles, sixth is Charles Sanford, seventh is Seth Cole, eighth Dylan Young, ninth Anthony McCurry, tenth Sean Galligan, eleventh is Joshua Collard, twelfth is JT Bryant, thirteenth is Tim Fiegel, fourteenth Joshua Sakuli, fifteenth James Qualls, sixteenth Kyle Matthews, seventeenth Grayson Ace Veto, uh, 18th is uh, Dorian Facepuncher, 19th Nelson Thornhill, 20th Matt Haas. 21st is Jonathan Zorlin, 22nd is Rafael LaDuc, 23rd is Trent Dunham, 24th David Rivera, 25th is Kev Shearer, 26th TJ Curtis, 27th is <coughs> Charles Jackson, 28th is Zach Rogers, 29th Dylan Poteet, 30th Chris Michaels, 31st is Austin LaPlante, 32nd is Zachary Fitzwater, 33rd is Preston Bloor, 34th is uh, uh, Paul Minnick, 35th is Matt McIntyre, 36th PJ Williams, 37th Nathaniel Reed, 38th Cole Deaver, 39th Carson Gum, 40th Oscar Anderson. Keep an eye on everybody's bunched up. Green flag is back out. And the 41 didn't quite get going. And now the 15 with that run up high. But now gets left to hang by the 83. <coughs> but the 41 still has the position on the racetrack. So we got one less than 29 laps to go. Here, or not 29, 19 laps to go, less than 19 to go here in the Daytona 500. And right now, Dylan Thoreau is your race leader, at least for the time being, as it's about to be three wide for second. Seth Cole and Charles Sanford, two teammates underneath Dougie Shears. But now here comes Chris Dollerton, Sean Galligan with runs on the inside. As we look in the back to see who is up to speed and who isn't, Carson Gum and Oscar Anderson are not up to speed. Cole Deaver, on the other hand, I don't know. Maybe if he was closer into the pack, he would be up to speed, maybe. But he is five miles per hour off the pace, and I think that's because he's lost a draft. Because he had two cars in front of him, I believe. But anyways, back up at the front, 
Dylan Thoreau still leads the way here in the 500 as it's about to be three wide for second again. JT Bryant with the run this time uh, on the bottom with help from Joshua Card, Kyle Matthews, Joshua Sikuli, and Tim Fiegel. <clears throat> as it's getting dicey, three wide up at the front again. As Dylan Thoreau continues to lead the Daytona 500, but now JT Bryan with the run on the inside is coming fast, and he is there to the lead. So JT Bryan currently is your leader in the Daytona 500. Kyle Matthews trying to get some help from teammates Charles Sanford and Seth Cole in the middle, but not really having much luck. Now he's going to dive down low to the bottom. To keep on with that run on underneath the 41 of Thoreau. Rookie Joshua Sakuli in the 11 in his Daytona 500 debut in the Marvel Studios Cup Series. He's having a solid run, running right now in the top five for the time being. As JT Bryan has led that lap, and now Kyle Matthews has the second spot. Now let's see if he can make something happen. Matthews up to the back bumper of the 22. Let's see if he pulls out a line going into the corner to get that run. And he went for it too late, but there's still plenty of time when we get to the line. We'll be at the halfway point. And Joshua Collard, again, impressive within the first five laps, came all the way back from dead last up to second place in five laps. And now... He's about to try to get to second again and maybe get a run for the lead. <clears throat> Rookie Tim Fiegel in the number eight for Sega Motorsports making his Walmart, or not Walmart Cup, Marvel Studios Cup Series points race debut. And speaking of going for a position, like I said a moment ago, Joshua Collard with the run on the inside of the 22. So he will have been the biggest mover of the whole race, starting dead last, and now he's about to get the lead. <clears throat> and remember, last season, Joshua Collard won the Daytona 500, so he's going to try to go for two in a row, but at that moment, close at the line, but now here comes Kyle Matthews with the run on the inside with help from David Rivera. Actually, it seems like Rivera's returning the favor because it was Matthews who pushed Rivera up to the lead, and then it was Rivera this time that pushed Matthews to the lead. But now it's about to get to three wide as here comes David's teammate, Rafael LaDuc in the number 99 Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 Ford out of Roush Racing. Don't know where the third Roush car, Chris Michaels, is running. Running at the tail end of this pack. He's definitely been struggling, and LaDuke shuts the door on Poteet and is going to lead that lap. <clears throat> Great move by the 99 to try and keep that position, and now he's going to try and block all lines to keep the position as Seth Cole is now the second with help from teammate Charles Sanfer in the 03. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go to helicopter camera for the rest of this lap and watch from above. As you can see, all this three wide action from fifth place on back. As Rafael Ledoux continues to lead the Daytona 500. But now Charles Sanford just decided he wasn't really getting much luck of trying to push Seth Cole to the front, so he's going to try to go to the front himself. But we've seen a lot of lead changes so far in this race. After that caution came out, we've had a couple of times where the leader will lead for multiple laps. But now here comes Sanford with the run, and he also shuts the door on Jonathan Zorlin to make sure he gets to that spot, and now Sanford goes to the point. Jonathan Zorlin, who led a lap early on, 
He's now trying to work his way back up to the front with help from newcomer Matt Haas in the 77 5 Hour Energy Toyota out of Furniture Row Racing. Teammates to uh, the 78 of Nelson Thornhill, the 87 of Angel Alvera, who missed out on this race, and the 71 of James Shelley, who also missed out on the race as well. But now it's going to be three wide for second. Chris Dollarton trying to get back in there. And look who's running behind him. James Qualls in the 70. Trying to make his way back up to the lead. <clears throat> but the 23 just shuts the door on any chance that 70 may have had of getting to the quarter panel of the 23. But now he's going to get that shot, maybe... No, the 23 shuts the door again. Just had too big of a run, and now Jonathan Zorlin has the lead. As we're now under 10 to go here in the Daytona 500. Oscar Anderson just gone to pit road, and I think P.J. Williams pitted too. That or just lost the pack. Could this be a sign of green flag pit stops coming? Because remember, they do have to make a pit stop before this race is over. It's just a matter of when they're going to do it. Because I don't think that they pitted under that caution. I think they all stayed out for the most part. So perhaps the 18 of PJ Williams going in, maybe going into pit road and losing the pack may be a sign that maybe these guys have to pit very, very soon. Meanwhile, he might get a challenge for the lead. Jonathan Zorlin has it, but DJ Curtis has the run on the inside. DJ Curtis now underneath the five. And that helps bring guys like Trent Dunham and Tim Fiegel back into the mix. But nobody in this pack has come into pit road just yet. Close out the line, but Zorlin still led that lap, and now DJ may have the bigger run going into turn one now. Oh, but he gets left hanging to dry as here comes Trent Dunham. Trent Dunham in the one. Now trying to get to the lead, but they're going to approach the slower machine of Carson Gum. And this can cause problems in a big way if they are not careful with that 19. Let's keep an eye on the 19 and see what happens with this. As they are three wide, several rows deep. Somebody's, there's going to be a lot of cars that are going to get held up. And it's going to be the middle and high lanes that get held up. Right now it's the middle line that's getting the worst of the bunch. Tough break for those guys. As the top three has pulled away from everybody for the time being. Matt Haas is now to the lead. With help from Anthony McCreary in the 61. But once they can get back into formation, the rest of the field can easily catch up to the top three. But DJ Curtis was the big loser in that mess. He went from leading and is now, oh my goodness, four wide. Oh, and there goes Curtis! There goes Curtis! Oh, this is the big one at Daytona upside down, or on his side was Tim Fiegel. Caution is out, definitely, after the big one has struck at Daytona as a result of a lapped car getting in the way. Man, oh man, that was a tough break. I feel for DJ Curtis. He went from leading, then got held up by the 19, tried to get away from the 19, and as a result made it four wide, and then gets taken out of the Daytona 500. Tough, tough break for that car. But Matt Haas, the rookie out of Furniture Row, is your current leader. So let's go ahead and take a look at a replay of what brought the caution out for the second time today here in the Daytona 500. Well, this is where the wreck is going to begin. Right there is DJ Curtis was just fed up with the 19 holding up the entire middle lane. He ends up pulling out and inadvertently makes it four wide. As a result, and then right there, as soon as Chris Michaels went on by, DJ Curtis thought he could be cleared to get in front of the 26 of Paul Menick, but just not enough room. 
and as a result comes down into the 26, comes back up, collects his teammate Dylan Thoreau, and then Tim Fiegel, Kyle Matthews, and then right up there as Poteet slid up, clobbers the eight on his driver's side and nearly flipped him upside down. I think he just ended up on his side for the most part with a little increment of being upside down. But there was actually another portion of that wreck that got started. Let's see if we can figure that out. Oh, further back, it was with the 24 of Matt McIntyre, it looks like. Something happened back here to get a second crash started after a reaction to what happened with the 14. Let's see. Oh, Zachary Fitzwater gets into the 42 of Preston Plourd. And as a result, they both get held up in this mess and wrecked. Poteet as well. Kyle Matthews, who had a great run going, he was involved. I don't know if Benjamin Miles in the 21 got involved or not. Let's see. Uh, he rode the outside wall a little bit, but I think he got through without many, without much significant damage. But the, the car that took the wild ride in this wreck was Tim Fiegel in the 8. Let's see that uh, ride he took one more time from the TV1 camera. Right there is Poti just clobbers him in the driver's side. Yeah, he did go upside down for a second and then goes back on his side and then back on the wheels. But that was a wild ride for the 8 car. And the big one, is, or, uh, Kev Shearer, also was involved in that mess as well. And the 12, Dylan Thoreau, who had a really good run going. So as a result, uh, about a 10-car pileup happens as a result of a lapped car getting in the way of many, many contenders. But let's go ahead and take you to what could be our final restart in the Daytona 500. Well, as a result of the big one, very few cars in that wreck are retired out of the race, and they include DJ Curtis, Dylan Poteet, Dylan Thoreau, and Tim Fiegel as they join Jessica Sheldon and Emmanuel Hartnett out of the race. Two cars lapped down, Carson Gum and Oscar Anderson. But we're about to have a green-white checkered here in the Daytona 500, so next flag after the green will end it, whether it be the white or the caution. But anyways, Matt Haas is your leader. Second is Anthony McCrory. Third is Trent Dunham. Fourth is Grayson Ace Veto. Fifth is Jonathan Zorling. Sixth is JT Bryant. Seventh, Austin LaPlante. Eighth, Raphael LaDuke. Ninth, Dorian Facepuncher. Tenth, is James Qualls. 11th is Johnny Gardner. 12th is Chris Dollerton. 13th, Charles Sanford. 14th, Nelson Thornhill. 15th, Sean Galligan. 16th, Seth Cole. 17th, Chris Michaels. 18th, David Rivera. 19th is Paul Minnick. 20th is Zach Rogers. <coughs> 21st is Joshua Collard. 22nd is Dylan Young. 23rd is Dougie Shears, 24th, Charles Jackson, 25th is Nathaniel Reed, 26th is Joshua Cooley, 27th is Benjamin Miles, 28th, Preston Plourd, 29th, Zachary Fitzwater, 30th, Matt McIntyre, 31st is PJ Williams, 32nd, Kyle Matthews, 33rd, Cole Deaver, and then 34th is Kev Shearer. <coughs> As a uh, Everybody's trying to get bunched up in time for this final restart. The green-white checkered. Perhaps the biggest green-white checkered in the history of my offline series. Who is going to win the Daytona 500? Green flag is back out. And Matt Haas didn't get quite as going as the 61 of McCrory. And McCrory's now to the back bumper. And now he's going to dive down low for position. McCrory just felt the time was right to make the move, and here he comes underneath of the 77 of Matt Haas. But here comes many others. Grayson Ace Veto in the 55 Gatorade Duel number 2 winner. We haven't seen much of him today. He's put his nose into the picture. Three wide for the lead. With help from JT Bryan and Austin LaPlante in the 48. Dorian Face Puncher is also going to get into that bottom line as well. 
Grayson Ace Veto in the 55 rookie out of Michael Waltrip Racing to the lead. As we're about to come, take the white flag. White flag is out, and here comes JT Bryant in the 22. He's got a run on the inside. He's got the position as it's three wide for second, as here comes Dorian Face Puncher in the 62. We haven't seen him run up this close to the front all day. Ah, oh, but he just opened up the bottom line. Well, let's see if he can get out in front of Sanford in time. I don't think he's going to be able to because it's now going to be three wide for second. And JT Bryant has pulled away from that because they're going three wide behind them. Coming off of turn four. Looks like no competition whatsoever for the 22. Coming through the trioval. Checkered flag waving. JT Bryant wins the Daytona 500 at Daytona. Huge win for that 22 team. Out of Young Motorsports, JT Bryant gets his first career Marvel Studios Cup Series victory in the biggest race of the season. The season opener, the Daytona 500. <laughs> Holy cow. He managed to get himself up to the lead and because everybody behind him was going three wide, he took advantage of that and made it happen for him to win this race. But let's look at the rest of the results after what was an exciting Daytona 500. Sean Galligan, who we did not talk about hardly at all, came out of nowhere and got second in the Great American Race, so great run for that car. Seth Cole in the 98, finishing with a solid third place finish. Great run in fourth for Charles Sanford. And then rounding out the top five, Chris Dollarton in the 23 with a great finish. Solid sixth place finish for Dorian Facepuncher. Solid seven for Nelson Thornhill. Great run in eighth for Anthony McCreary. Solid nine for Austin LaPlante. And then rounding out the top ten with a great run in tenth, Jonathan Zorlean. Rest of the top 20 was Joshua Collard, Grayson Ace Veto, Rafael Duke, Matt Haas, David Rivera, Johnny Gardner, Trent Dunham, James Qualls, Chris Michaels, Paul Minnick. Rest of the top 30 was Dylan Young, Charles Jackson, uh, Benjamin Miles, Zach Rogers, Nathaniel Reed, PJ Williams, Preston Bloor, Joshua Sakuli, Dougie Shears, and Zachary Fitzwater. Rest of the lead lap cars were Cole Deaver, Ma Matt McIntyre, Kev Shearer, and Kyle Matthews. Two cars lap down, Carson Gum and Oscar Anderson. And then everybody else was out of the race after our two wrecks we had. And they were DJ Curtis, Dylan Poteet, Dylan Thoreau, Tim Fiegel, Jessica Shelton, and Emmanuel Hartnett. So that does it for our coverage here today at Daytona for the Daytona 500 and the conclusion of Daytona Speed Week. I hope you guys enjoyed this week of racing. We begin the rest of the season with Race 2 at California in a few days. But until then, here are your results, rookie points, and regular points heading into California. And this is Levi McIntyre, signing off.